What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we did see the indices rallying across the board and we did see the VIX getting crushed. Does this mean that we're going back into a bull cycle? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today we did see SPY going up 0.36%. And again, it was another very volatile day. And at one point, we did see SPY trading below 432. However, we did see buyers of the dip stepping in. And we did see about the same amount of volume that we had yesterday. But today we did get a green candle and we did close higher near the end of the day. So looking at the daily chart, we are definitely still in this downtrend and we are still below our resistance trend line. So there's no way we can look at the daily chart and get overly bullish just yet. Remember, we still need to get that decisive bullish breakout and close above 436. So critical resistance on SPY will be 436 and our 50 EMA right around 438. And if we can start closing back above the 50 EMA, the bull should start to scare away the bears. And remember, we still have that gap to fill up there at 442. So watch critical resistance at 436 and 438 with critical support at 433 and below 433 we're looking for a retest of the low at 429. Below 429 the floor starts to fall out and we could go to 425 or 419. Now remember we've been watching the hourly chart on this channel and we're trying to see if we were going to get another higher low because we have been forming higher highs and higher lows on the hourly chart. You can clearly see on the hourly chart that we did put in another higher low today. And now that means we do have another critical support level right around SPY 432. So the next thing the bulls need to do is to take SPY higher and form another higher high. The previous high was right around 441. So the next higher high basically needs to close the gap at 442 or possibly go even higher. Anything higher than about 441.7 will be a higher high on the one hour chart. And really, we'll likely see SPY go to 444 or 446 to form that next high. So what that means coming out of this higher low situation is we could expect to see a nice impulse of rally that could take us to SPY levels of 444 or higher. That would close the gap above. And remember, there's no longer a gap below. So the bulls have the advantage at this time forming this higher low and forming another solid base of support right around 432. So there will be a strong support zone between SPY 432 and 435 as the bulls try to reverse the downward trend on the daily chart. So pay attention to the hourly chart because it's very important at this time and we could possibly be seeing a trend shift and a trend reversal on the hourly chart before we ever get to see it on the daily chart. Remember, you'll always see a trend shift on the hourly chart before you ever see a trend shift on the daily chart. Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we saw the NASDAQ going up a whopping 0.8% today, but still getting rejected at that resistance level at 360. Remember, we still have the confirmed downtrend in the daily chart as well with all the moving averages stacked to the bear side, and we still do see the triple Qs below our resistance trend line. We need to see the triple Qs closing back above 360 and breaking out above about 363, and then we could reattempt to break out above the 50 EMA right around 365. The triple Q still have that gap to close at 367.7 and we did close the gap below so that's the only gap remaining. The bulls want to shoot for that gap because that will be the next higher high and that will break the downtrend on the daily chart if the bulls can go up there and close that gap. Remember we're watching for this textbook ABC pattern which means we could be going through a correction and the correction could have came to an end and now we're expecting to see impulses back in the bullish direction. So we're going to start looking for impulses higher to close that gap and continue to retest previous all-time highs and then we'll assess whether or not this market is going back on the bull and starting to break out when we can close that gap and continue to trend higher. So this is a textbook ABC and we are starting to see higher low situations on this hourly chart. Just like with SPY we did put in another higher low today so there's going to be a new triple Q's layer of support right around 357 because that's where our hourly higher low is. So the next thing we need to do is form another higher high, which means the triple Q's need to break out above 365. So essentially what that means is the bulls need to go close that gap up there above 367. So look for a potential bullish impulse tomorrow that could go up there and close that gap. And if we blast right through that gap, you're looking for resistance at 373 and 378. So remember, this is a bullish development on the hourly chart with the higher lows, higher highs. And we will see the bullish development on this hourly chart before we ever see it on the daily chart. So this is your very early indication that we're possibly getting a trend reversal and we could be going back on the bull in the very near future. Jumping back over to the daily chart, you can see that we did go higher on very similar volume to the last couple of days, which is about the same volume we were going lower on. 
Remember, low volume selling really isn't something to panic about because you're not going to get the elevator down unless you get high volume selling. So look for that critical breakout of resistance at 360 and 363, and the ultimate test of resistance will be up there at 365 before we can go close that gap. To the downside, we now have support at 357, which is our hourly higher low, and below that we have 354, our trend line right around 352, and below that we're very likely going for that next leg lower, and we're going into a deeper stock market correction at 347 or 342. But for the time being, it looks like the bulls are still out there buying the dip. So watch that critical support at 357. Jumping over to the Dow Jones, we can see the Dow Jones went absolutely nowhere today, only going up 0.03% and getting rejected just below that 5 EMA and closing below a negatively sloping 20 simple moving average. However, it's the same story as the rest of the indices and this is still a higher low, but we don't see the Dow Jones getting a nice bounce today like we did in the SPY and the triple Qs. So watch critical support on the Dow Jones right here at 341.8. 339 and 336.76. We still have a strong support level at 339 and that is by far the most critical support on the Dow Jones. If we break below that, we could lose the support at 336 and go down there to close the gap at 332. Upside resistance is at 346 and 348 and we need to see the Dow Jones breaking back above 348 to get back on the bull. Above 348, look for resistance at 351 and 355. On the Russell 2000, we were up 0.47% today and we see the Russell 2000 back above all the moving averages with the price action. But remember, the Russell doesn't have a trend for the bears or the bulls and it's really just chopping around going sideways. We now have support at 222, our support trend line right around 220, our support level at 219, and our wedge support level right around 217. Remember, below 217, we're likely going to break down and reattempt to break out below 215, which would be a bearish breakdown and we could see the floor fall out in the Russell 2000. To the upside, we have resistance at 224, our resistance trend line right around 226, and our resistance breakout level at 227. Above 227, the Russell 2000 is looking a lot more bullish, and it could start to go back into a bull trend. On the ARK ETF, we were up 1.5% today, and ARK did close right below a negatively sloping 20 simple moving average, and our resistance level right around 113.8. Remember, we did get the confirmed double topping pattern on ARK, and we did break the neckline, so we still do have this confirmed price target way down here at $102. So if ARK cannot break back above the neckline and close back above 115.5, it's still possible that ARK is going for that next leg lower back down towards that price target at 102. If ARK can blast and close back above 115 and reclaim that level as support, the double topping pattern is invalidated and we no longer have to go to that price target at 102. So look for a bullish break above 115.5 or a bearish breakdown and we're going back down towards that price target at 102. We'll keep it as simple as that as ARK because as long as we have the confirmed double top, we want to be cautious of more downside. Jumping over to the VIX, we did see the VIX getting crushed today, going down over 6%. So we can see the VIX is decisively back below that level at 20, and we are back below the resistance trend line. Remember, the bullish development is the VIX closing back below 18.2, and we could very likely see that as soon as tomorrow. If the VIX keeps bouncing between 18.2 and 20, we're still going to get that volatile and choppy market with no clear direction. So the bulls need to see the VIX breaking back below 18.2 and the bears want to see the VIX blasting back out above 20 to tell us that we're going to see more volatility and more elevator down selling. So right now the VIX is leaning towards bullish because we are seeing the VIX heading lower, closing back below all the moving averages and starting to develop some bearish trending, which is going to favor the bull cycle case and it's going to favor the bulls. On Bitcoin, we're currently up about 2.4% and we can see Bitcoin still looking extremely bullish with price action above all the moving averages and we still do have the full bull trend. Remember, my price target is right here, basically at 59,000 and above 59,000, Bitcoin is likely going to break out and start running to brand new all-time highs. My price targets for the all-time highs are 67,000 and 75,000 and critical support is at 52,700, 51,000 and 48,000. As long as Bitcoin is above 45,000, I think you need to stay on the bull because you never know how high Bitcoin can actually go. On Amazon stock, we were up 1.14% today and we did see Amazon closing back above the 5 EMA, but we still do have the full bear trend. Remember on Amazon stock for the bulls, you need to see a break and close back above 33.11 and then we could come up here and start closing these gaps at 34.52 and 3580. As long as Amazon is below 3311, we could still be going down for that next leg lower for a potential double bottom look off of that support at 3185 or that next leg lower at 3136. 
So Amazon below 3311, you need to be a lot more defensive for possibility of another leg lower. Or we could see Amazon breaking above 3311, and then we want to get back on the bull on Amazon stock and get ready to go close those gaps above. So be patient on Amazon stock because we're going to know which direction it's going to go in the very near future. Jumping over to Tesla stock, we were up 0.67% today and we continue to see Tesla looking very bullish with price action still above that support level at 800 and we still do have the full bull trend. Our next price target is 825 and above 825 we start breaking out and retesting previous all time highs. So watch support at 800, our 20 simple moving average at 775, our support level at 765, and our breakout support level at 745. As long as Tesla is holding this bullish look, you don't want to give up on Tesla because it could still break out and it could even go to a brand new all-time high. If Tesla starts closing back below 732, we could see it roll over and go through a full-blown correction, but there's no reason to believe that's about to happen at this time with the full bull price action and the full bull trend. On Apple stock, we were down 0.42% today and we did see Apple testing that support level at 139 and getting a very decisive bounce off of that level. Remember, Apple still does have the full bear trend and the price action is below all the moving averages, so we still do have a lot of downward momentum in Apple stock. If Apple breaks below support at 139, look for the gap close support at 137 and below 137, we're likely going much lower. Upside resistance is still at 142 and 145, and Apple will start to look a lot more bullish if it can break and close back above 145. So watch Apple closely and understand that Apple is a market moving stock. So if we see Apple breaking down and heading a lot lower, that will put downward pressure on the market. But if we see Apple stabilizing and breaking back above 145, that could signal the next bull cycle in the whole entire stock market. On the financials, we were down 0.57% today with a very volatile day, but we did still maintain the bull trend and the price action is still above a positively sloping 20 simple moving average. The industrial sector was up 0.21% today again with a very volatile day and we still do have price action below the 50 EMA and we are still very close to having the full bear trend. We need to see the industrials getting back over that 50 EMA to reverse the downward trend. The healthcare sector was up 0.16% today and we do see the healthcare sector finding support at that previous low and we could be putting in a potential double bottom look. We need to see the healthcare sector breaking back above the 50 EMA to reverse the bear trend and right now the healthcare sector has bearish price action with a bearish trend. The energy sector was down 0.09% today but we still see the price action above all the moving averages and we still do have a very strong bull trend. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, you can definitely see slowly but surely they're starting to become more and more bullish developments. We're starting to see the one hour charts looking a lot more bullish and on the daily charts we're starting to stabilize and build more foundations of support at another higher low. So very soon and possibly as early as the end of the week, we could know exactly which direction this market is going to go. So continue to watch the price action at these critical levels. We're either going to break out and prove the bulls are taking back control of the market or we're going to get rejected at these key resistance levels and go down for that next leg lower. I still think there's just way too much bearish sentiment across the board, so I do want to take the contrarian stance, and I do think you're much better off being a bull at these levels. When the short trade gets overcrowded, we're more than likely going to continue to climb the wall of worry, so block out the noise and follow the price action. If the price action starts breaking out and we start heading higher, you want to be bullish no matter how bad the news gets and how loud the noise gets. Block it out and be objective and follow the price action and we're very close to having bullish price action if we could break out above these key levels. Also don't forget I have my own trade alert service called Bank Trade Alerts that only trades Qs, and I think with the current market conditions now is the best time to be a bank member. I'm currently running a 50% off promotion code for your first month so now could be the best time to try out Bank Trade Alerts. You can find out all the details and how to join by clicking on the links in the description of the video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis to help you navigate this volatile market and stay on the right side of the trade. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join by clicking on the link below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.